Welcome back guys and this is Kavya. So in the last video we have learned to perform the convolution operation on an image wherein we place the filter completely on an image and slide it from left to right and also from top to bottom while performing the mathematical operation. Now if you just observe the screen you can see that my original image is of the dimension 5 cross 5. Now when I perform the convolution operation with a kernel size of 3 cross 3 it actually resulted in the generation of image which is of the dimension 3 cross 3. Now why is that happening? Why are we getting such resultant image? So to understand the reason, please do observe this animation. Here, if you observe carefully, the system is actually unable to slide the kernel from the pixel points at the outer region of my input image. Just see here, if I try to place my kernel at the outer pixel points of the image, it would just go out of bounds. Hence, my system is unable to perform the convolution operation at the outer dimension, thus resulting in losing a dimension along each axis. Understood? Now, if we don't want to lose the dimension while performing the convolution operation, what we have to do? Yes, what we have to do? So, what we have to do is, we have to make use of the concept of padding. What it is called? It is called padding. Where we add a new dimension of blank values before we perform the convolution. I repeat here. See, when we have to make use of this concept padding, what we do is, we add a new dimension of blank values that too before we perform this convolution. And guys, here this padding actually refers to the blank values, which is nothing but the pixel values, which are equal to zero. So collectively, I can say as by including this padding layer, we won't be losing out any dimension while performing the convolution operation. And guys, you can also observe the same in our animation. See? So guys, this time we have actually added a single layer as a padding layer. And because of this, when we are performing the convolution operation, we are still getting the output which is the same as our input dimension. And one more thing over here that is by including this padding layer, my kernel can now move along every pixel in my original image. So guys, this is how the padding layer works in our convolution neural networks. Okay, so the next concept which we are going to explore is stride. What is it? Stride. So here stride refers to step size. Currently, if you observe the step size, the system is moving one pixel at a time. Correct, right? If you observe this animation, you can easily tell that uh, the system is moving one pixel at a time. That means my kernel is sliding on the image by moving one step at a time. And of course, we can alter this by specifying the stride size. How do we do it? So just observe here. Now this animation shows the movement of kernel when I give the stride as 2. See, if the stride is 2, it has just changed its movement. That is, by applying the stride as 2, the kernel is now moving in a very different manner. Okay? So guys, till now, we have learned about the working of convolution operation on a grayscale image, which is nothing but an image with single color channel. So the obvious question which arise in our mind is, how does this convolution work on a color image? So in the case of these color images, what we actually do is we apply a filter on each of the color channels and then we perform the aggregation of the resulting channels to get the transformed image. Got it? So guys, I really hope that uh, this explanation gave you a clear idea about the concept of strides and padding. Okay, with this, we come to the end of this video and as always, please do subscribe to our channel to get more such informative videos and if you want, you can share it with your friends for spreading the knowledge and guys, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.